Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. You all know I love sharing my secrets of how I went from 17,000 a year to a multimillionaire. My top essential tool for managing my two successful businesses, plus my crazy life, is my paper planner. But not any random planner, specifically my inner guide yearly planner. The inner guide planner doesn't just organize my schedule, it helps me map out and discover my goals, dreams, self-care, and keeps my millionaire mindset on track. I want you all to get planning right away for 2019. So I arranged to get a special inner guide discount exclusive to my Project Me posse. Go pick out your favorite yearly planner at inner-guide.com and at checkout, use the code Project Me 15% off and you will receive 15% off your entire order. If you are driving or multitasking and can't write this down, the inner guide link and code is in my Instagram bio at Project Me with Tiffany. And remember, as I always say, you are either planning for success or heading to failure. You are listening to the podcast Project Me with Tiffany Carter. This is episode 54, how I set my intentions, goals, and plans for 2019 to make them stick and hold me accountable along the way. Hey, Project Me Posse, so happy you're tuning in today. And this is super important. I wanted to make sure I did an episode on goal planning and how I go through this process, not just for myself, but what I take my customized coaching clients through. Um, This really will probably open your eyes to a new way of goal reflecting and setting strategies. And you're going to definitely see a shift in how you hold yourself accountable And you will also be able to see how you reach these milestones along the way and be able to honor yourself and actually like celebrate your little wins along the way. Those are the things that keep us going, right? I mean, we can set these lofty goals over a glass of wine (laughs) or, or when we're in like an amazing mood and we're like sitting by a fireplace with a cup of tea or coffee and like we have all these like grand visions of sugar plums dancing in our heads. And we can put in, I'm going to have a million dollar year in 2019. I'm going to hire five new people on my team. I'm going to become a world renowned international speaker. And I'm all about dreaming big guys, believe me, because I really believe when you put it out there, like the grander it is. Okay. So let's say, you know, that first year you put it out there, you only get to 30% of your goal. Well, 30% of something grand is better than 30% of something, you know, kind of just above average. So I'm a big believer in that. But when we go for those really, really big goals, and we don't break down milestones along the way, we can get really discouraged and burn out really fast. This is like what you see when all the gyms and the fitness centers get really populated in the beginning of the year, and people set really lofty goals and are really jazzed and have all this excitement about what they're going to do, you know, five days a week, seven days a week. And every single year, I mean, I've been a fitness person my entire life, played sports all through high school and college. Every single year, I can almost count to the date. It's usually like that first week of February. Now the gym is back to normal, like literally. It's it's the same every year. So I don't want that to happen to you in your business. And so I want to show you what works for me and it works for hundreds of clients that I've worked with over the years who are from all different backgrounds, right? Whether they have 
you know, eight figure businesses, whether they're just starting, whether they have a corporate job and they want to transition out, whether they want to actually, you know, get promoted and stay in as an employee, which is also fine as long as that makes you happy. So whatever it may be. So let's get to it. Oh, and full disclosure, you guys need to know, like, I'm a hardcore Virgo. (laughs) And for those of you who aren't who aren't into the signs, um, any Virgos who are listening, we love mapping things out and planning. It gives us a sense of uh, security, uh, purpose. We drive. We genuinely like it. So I am aware not everyone likes doing this. So I want you to do it in your own way. It can be messy. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be color coordinated. Um, I'll take a picture of my handwriting and you'll go, oh, OK, because a lot of people picture my um, my planning and goal ref- reflecting um, planners to be like perfectly color coordinated with like tabs and amazing print. I literally have like the worst handwriting. Like, thanks for sending me to Montessori to my parents because we learned handwriting by some really like crafty artsy way with sandpaper on boards and traced it with our finger. That's what I that's what I blame it. <laughs> that's what I blame it on. And also the computer age, because pretty quickly, you know, you weren't handwriting things, you were typing. Anyway, I digress. Okay. So let's let's get to it. So the first thing I want to say is we have to start with how we feel. And this this is true for business as well. Every aspect of our lives, but a lot of times when it comes to money, business, you know, adulting things, we take the feelings out of it. We become very stuck in our head about it, um, very linear thinking. That just isn't going to work. We need to start with how we feel. So when you're looking back at 2018, And the goals you set for yourself. And maybe you didn't set goals. Maybe this is a new practice for you. Some people are really afraid of committing and setting goals because they have a fear of failure that they won't then achieve them. And then they've set them and then that would really, you know, be upsetting to them. So it's okay if you've never done this before. But so whatever goals you've had for 2008 things, 2018, or things that you really wanted to accomplish, right, you may have not made them into official goals, I want you to take a look and use your planner, use a journal. Okay, I'm a big fan. If you guys, you know, follow me on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany or or on Facebook Project Me with Tiffany. I am a huge, huge, huge fan of inner guide planners. I'll make sure I link them in the show notes and you can always DM me and I'll give you my exclusive discount code. I've been a planner junkie really my entire life. I'm very particular. And there's perfectly aligns with my methods when you're combining feelings, reflection, and goal setting, and then goal monitoring. So they work perfectly. But if you have another brand that's your jam, that's fine. Um, But I'm going to be basing some of this off of the planners that I use. Okay. So I want you to use a planner, a paper planner. Okay. I know we're in the digital age, blah, blah, blah. Don't care. You can use that too. You need to put pen to paper. There's actual science behind this. Okay. I won't get all into it. You can Google it. There is proven science that when you put pen to paper, whether with its whether it's goal setting, whether it is um, doing mindset work, whatever it is, it sticks much more seriously in your brain and your subconscious than if you just you know type with your thumbs, type with your fingers, or even worse, just kind of like try to filter it in your head and tell yourself you remember. How many of you have done that? I've done that. Like I've done a I've I did a really great talk at a pharmaceutical company recently and I had a great quote come out of my mouth. And I even realized it after I said it cuz I heard the audience go, "Oh my god." And I was like, "Oh, that's great." And I was like, "God, I better remember that." You know, cuz in in when I do my talks in pharma, um it is a closed caption, meaning no one can do Instagram or share it or anything. Um it's a very highly regulated environment, as you can imagine. Um, So that's why I can't post anything about it. 
So I was like, okay, no one's going to be able to like, you know, tweet this or anything. So, okay, I'll remember this quote. And I tell myself I'm going to remember. And here it's something that like had a big impact. It's a sim- It was a simple quote. You know what, you guys? I don't remember it to this day. I, I'm, I hope it comes to me at some point. I have no idea. And that's my point. We can tell ourselves to remember something or I'm going to do this or I'm going to make this appointment or whatever. But when we keep something just in our head, it just doesn't stick. Like I said, there's actual science behind it. So I want you to take your planner. If you don't have one, I want you to get one. And if you don't you know, want to spend the money on getting an inner guide planner or you know, that's not your jam, even though I, like I said, a really damn good discount code for you guys. You can go to like stores, even like um, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, those kind of stores. And you go in there like they actually have a cool office supply section. And they have, um, they'll have 2019 planners. They might be the ones that are like 2018 and 19, but they'll have, you know, both masculine based planners, you know, feminine, you know, type color planners. And they'll have those in there if you're looking for a less expensive option. Or you can just, you know, if you want, you, if you want to get really creative, just take, you can take a blank notebook and make your own. I don't want cost to be an issue here or for you to get caught up in like finding the most magical planner. I love that process. That really excites me. That's part of my process, but I get that's not everyone's. Okay, so I want you to go in your planner and some planners like in our guide will prompt you to do this in terms of reflection. Um, most of them don't. So you can just go to one of the blank pages. You can turn a you can turn a page into a blank page, whatever works for you. Want you to write down the goals that you had set for 2018. And I want you to do categories, okay? And I want to keep this simple because we complicate stuff that none of us ever do it. At least I don't. When it gets too complicated, it's like, this is too much work. So literally split the page. One side, career financial. Other side, personal life. Okay? It's that simple. And put 2018 and put down what your goals were. Even if you didn't like profess them to the world or write them down because this is a new process to you, you know what some of your your goals were, even if they were more vague. So I want you to write down what they were, leave a little bit of space, okay? Then I want you to go back and see where you got to that goal. Did you meet that goal? Did it fall off? Did you even forget about setting it in the first place? Um, Whatever it is, what happened with that goal? Then the third thing is go back through. And again, this doesn't have to be a lot of writing unless you really want to. Go back through and I want you to, to answer the question top of mind. How do I feel about this goal? You know, whether you crush the goal, whether it happened, it didn't happen. How did it feel? Because I have, for example, I won when I was in when I was in a corporate job as an employee um, in the pharmaceutical world. I won tons of sales awards, okay? But then there's some sales awards that are a bigger deal. I won like as number one in the entire nation. Huge deal. And I, that was my big goal to get there. I was in last place, by the way, when I started at the beginning of the year. And I remember it like it was yesterday and it was a long time ago. And I worked my butt off. I did all the things. And I remember I got the phone call from like the senior analytics person letting me know like literally an hour before the announcement. And I even remember where I was standing to this day. And you would have thought I would have like jumped for joy and been super psyched. And I was like, wow, okay, cool. That's awesome. And that was it. <laughs> It didn't feel how I thought it was going to feel. So that's why I want you to go back and attribute um, feelings to it. Like, oh, you know, I was happy I accomplished it, but it didn't really light me up. Or, oh, I felt this felt amazing. Or, you know, I didn't really feel much of anything. I felt like, meh. I want you to put that down because what we think is going to excite us and light us up isn't always in alignment we pull things from like society and maybe other people, you know, so we, we, or maybe even our families, like we think it's a big deal or we think we'd be really excited, you know, going back and getting our master's degree or something like that. And we get it. We're not even like, 
that thrilled with that day. It's just not in alignment with us. It doesn't mean it's not a great accomplishment. So that's why I want you to do that. Okay. And then for 2019, when we're going to do the, you know, going forward with our goals and looking forward, you're going to start to have some more information. You want to have information when you set goals. You know, just like when we, before you go into a business meeting, or maybe you're going into doing um, a consult with a potential client, whatever it is, we, we need to have information before we do some proper goal setting. So that's why the goal reflecting aspect of it is so important. And I kept it simple. Now it's on paper, you have it there. And I want you to keep it in that same planner you're going to use for 2019. Because now you can remind yourself, there's going to be days where you need to remind yourself like, Oh, my God, like, I really think that, you know, making XYZ is so important. But what really lights me up is the fact that I was able to to um, spend much more time, quality time with my kids. You know, this is where you're starting to be able to see what really matters to you. A lot of times we think it's money, but, but oftentimes it's something else. But money is the vehicle that allows us to get there oftentimes. Okay. So now when we are going forward um, in 2019 and we're setting our goals, this is what I want you to do differently, okay? Um, I want you, again, you can take the same, you know, a different piece of paper, a different part of your journal. Again, you're using something like Inner Guide Journals. It prompts you to do this um, and it has pages for this, but you can always, you know, create your own. So on one side, you do your career financial, other side, you know, are your personal life goals. Okay. And I want you to do a similar exercise. This is something different than you've probably done before. Okay. So put the goal that you have um, for whatever it is. Let's say, like, I'll give mine. Mine is um, to gross $5 million for Project Me with Tiffany in 2019. Um, so there's one of my goals. Then I want you to put underneath that why. Why is that a goal? And it needs to be top of mind, even if whatever comes out seems silly. But why is that your goal? Like, why? Why? Because, you know, because a lot of times we can come up with some number because we feel we're supposed to or we saw some, you know, boss, boss, babe, boss, dude that we follow that did that in 2018. And we think it's awesome. So we kind of adopted it ourselves. So I want you to get closer to the feelings, right? So why? For me, the why is it'll allow me to make a greater impact on the world to where I can give more information, more value, more engagement with people through speaking venues, through charities. I can do more work for free pro bono with my company generating more revenue. So that's my why. Because the revenue that comes in allows me to give back more without me having to think, oh my God, I'm spending so much time giving back and my company is, you know, kind of being drained of funds over here. So that's my why. Your why might be to, you know, to be able to travel to, you know, countries in a luxury lifestyle that you've always desired, or it might be to send your kids to private school, or it might be to fund your kids' college funds. It could be so you could hire a personal trainer or a cleaning lady. It doesn't have to be some like grand why that would end up on like Oprah or something like that. But I want you to put the why. Because sometimes when we put the why, or when we even do this part of the exercise, we go, oh my God, like, this really isn't that important to me, as important to me as I thought. I don't even know where I got this goal from. And that's okay. If that happens, get rid of it. We don't want you to have like 15 goals, because that's just craziness. So then you do the why. Then I want you to do, as long as, you know, if you haven't already X'd out this goal from the why, then do, how would it feel to achieve this goal? And it could be one word. I love one words, as long as they're feeling words, you know, incredible, empowering, 
um, mesmerizing, fun, crazy, um, put how it would feel. Like, so if we're using mine as an example, um, for Project Me with Tiffany to generate $5 million in revenue in 2019 so that I can make a bigger impact on the world and give more in, in time and service for free, um, it would make me feel incredible. It would make me feel fulfilled and joyful and super, super excited to get up every day and serve. That's, that's a, there you go. That's it. I gave a little elaboration and you can feel free to elaborate if you want, or if you're someone who is a person, more a few words, just give one word, but it's really important. Then the next step after we've done this, okay, and you might find out when you actually do the feeling part, how would it feel? You, this goal might be X'd out at this stage. You might go, oh, you know, like I told you about the sales award. If I had done this practice back then, I would have gone, I would have probably realized, oh, you know, I would have been like, okay, that's cool. I, literally, my reaction was like this subdued, like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, thanks for letting me know. That's how I felt. If I'd done this exercise back then, I would have gone, I would have probably gone, how would it have, how would it feel if I achieved the goal? Oh, it, it'd feel cool. Like, yeah, but not this would feel awesome. This would feel amazing. And then I would have been able to have made some adjustments. That doesn't mean maybe that's not one of my secondary goals, but I could have made some adjustments versus pouring all of my time, heart, and energy into achieving something where it wouldn't have really lit me up at all. Okay. So I, I want you to then do your key markers. Okay. This is the next step. What are your key milestones in achieving these goals? So whatever it is, like I said, it could be to take, um, four trips this year, um, in different places on your bucket list around the world. It could be to be able to afford a nanny, private school, a chef, to move, to upgrade your home. I mean, it can be for, you can have things that you desire on your list that are like, you know, a handbag or a car. I don't care. Um, no judgment here. I've done all of it. <laughs> um, but you need to have key markers, right? So if you're someone who's into working out or running, right? When people train for races, whether it's a marathon or a half marathon, there are mile markers. There's a reason there are mile markers, right? You don't just want to like, can you imagine whether you've you've done races or not? Can you imagine running a marathon and not knowing during that entire freaking time you're running what mile marker you're at? At some point, you'll go, oh my God, how much left do I have to go? Like, there's something that can keep you going about it. There's a lot of mental exercises you can do about it. But also when you're really doing it in the sense of, you know, you're trying to beat your time or set a goal, you know, okay, I'm at mile marker eight and the time, you know, my time in this race is whatever it is. Let's just say, I don't know. I have no, I'm not good with this stuff, but let's just say it's an hour or something like that. We're in it an hour. Okay, I'm on pace for my goal. Now I know I'm on pace. Or, okay, I'm a little behind pace. I'm going to need to kick it up a notch. You see what I'm saying? The same goes for like, let's say you're taking a road trip. You're t you don't just, I mean, unless you're like super hippie dips, you don't like just like pop in a car and like randomly take a road trip. You know your mile markers. Like even if you're not someone who's a super planner, you know roughly like if you're going from, let's say, LA to even, you know, Arizona or whatever, you know, okay, it would probably be good going from central LA to Air to Arizona will probably around, you know, Palm Springs or something do a stop like, you know, roughly how long it's going to take you to get there, or how many days and approximately how many stops. And even if you're not strict about it, you're gauging how you're doing on the trip or if you're on if you're on point, if you're off course, you know because you actually have markers along the way. I hope that makes sense for you guys. I love giving analogies and I try to give more than one because some resonate with some people more than others. And analogies really, really help me. So that's why you need to have key markers for your goals. Um, I'm some people really prefer to have a lot of markers, okay? 
like we can go back to our analogies. You know, those people who do um, road trips and they meticulously plan their stops. There's people who are, you know, super, super into, you know, doing their different um, races and marathons. And they're very meticulous about where they need to be at at each time. I mean, even if they're not like an Olympic athlete, they're very particular. Some people are more loose. Okay. I am somewhere in between. I do know it's very important to have multiple markers. So I would want you guys to at least have four markers for each goal. Um, Just at least four. If you're someone who wants more and that works for you, totally fine. But you need to have at least four. There's many reasons for this. There's a lot of... uh, mindset, psychological reasons. It's very important to see where you're at along the way to see if you're on track, but it's also important to celebrate those wins along the way. And it breaks things down, these bigger goals into more palatable chunk size uh, goals, you know, sub goals almost. So it doesn't seem as overwhelming and it, it will keep you much more motivated and engaged. Okay. So now when you're going back through your 2019 goal list, the ones that actually made the cut after the exercise, the feeling exercises we did, I want you to put the four key milestone markers for each goal and what that would look like. And if you need help with any of this, you guys, because I've gotten, I get stuck too now and I'll reach out to my coach or I'll, I'll reach out to, you know, one of my entrepreneur friends and run it by them. Um, so if you get stuck on what would be, you know, what would be fair and reasonable, um, markers, because we don't always know, especially if it's a goal, that's something we've never been in that arena before. Feel free to um, DM me on Instagram, Project Me with Tiffany, or message me on Facebook and and I'll write you back um, and, and kind of help you get to those markers. So sometimes the markers, right, uh, can be quantified financially. So or quantified in terms of number of clients or customers or maybe number of purchases if you're actually selling physical goods. And we love quantifying. Quantifying is great, but I don't want all of your markers to be quantifiable because that can also be discouraging, right? Like let's just say you sell um, tank tops and hats. Like you have a store that has stuff like that. Um, and you say, okay, well, I want to, so I'm going to do easy math for myself, but let's say you want to have 8,000, you want to sell 8,000 items from your store in 2019. And so that would be 2,000 items a quarter, right? So you could break it down in 2,000 a quarter. Well, you could get to the end of quarter one and only sell two, you know, 2,000 or maybe only 1,000, right? But then and then nothing the next quarter. But then in your fourth quarter, when it's, you know, holiday season, peak holiday season, you could have 10,000 at that time. You see what I'm saying? So you have to be careful with, um, you know, setting the numbers because setting numbers only in terms of markers, because you can get really discouraged. So you need to combine quantifiable mile markers, you know, number of units sold, number of clients, number of downloads, numbers on your email list, um, number of people buying your courses, your book, whatever it is. I want you to have that. That's important. But I want you to also have markers um, like, for example, um, I feel this way. I feel energized and excited about my goals every day. That can even be on one of your markers. Another one of your markers could be um, that my email list is growing um, is growing consistently, right? You're not attaching a number to it. Again, you do have quantifiable goal markers, but I want you to have ones that are a little more loose and then ones that are like feeling based, right? Because if it's just numbers, it really you can it can be discouraging. That's like why the whole, you know, losing weight deal that can be a nightmare because then, you know, one week you might even go up a pound, but then the next week you lose four and it can just be, it can be a disaster. So I want you to be more loose about it. I, you can have things in there of hire people to help me reach my goal. 
That could be one of the markers that you hire people to help you reach your goal. So you could have something like that in there. There's another example. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I'm sure it was. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free again to reach out to me. If this episode was um, is getting you on the right track for 2019 and you feel like you've learned something different, I would super appreciate it, you guys, if you could take a screenshot and tag me that you're listening to the episodes that I can see that this was something that was helpful for you. Um, then I know I can make more episodes like this. If you are interested in um, any of the tools I use, um, my two main tools that I use in terms of goal reflecting and goal setting, like I said, are the inner guide planners. They have a yearly planner and a 90 day goal setting planner. And I also use the desire map workbook. And I do that with a desire map certified coach. Um, and that's where a lot of the goal setting around feelings comes in. And it's a it's a lot more inner and mindset work, but the two work really well together. So any questions you have on those resources, you can, of course, um, DM me the link to inner guide is in my Instagram profile. So it's right there. But otherwise, look in show notes, reach out to me. And again, you don't have to use all the things I use. You use what works for you and what you enjoy. I just always like to give my recommendations because I know most of you really appreciate that. Wishing you the best success and great health, wealth, and worth in 2019. Cheers, you guys. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.